These are the best Hogwarts Legacy PC settings for maximum FPS in-game whilst maintaining the game's amazing look and visual fidelity. Starting off in the display options, we're looking at window mode, which we have to set to windowed full screen. There isn't a full screen exclusive option in Hogwarts Legacy for some reason. In theory, that isn't too bad because number one, this isn't a game where we care too much about the latency that typically comes with a windowed mode. And also, windowed full screen in recent games has performed the same, if not better than an exclusive full screen. So just go with windowed full screen for this. Monitor is obviously just going to be whichever monitor uh, you want to have the game running on. I've got it running on my Asus main monitor. The next three settings for me were then default grayed out. The reason for this is that resolution is grayed out because we're running in a windowed mode and rendering resolution and anti-aliasing mode are grayed out because we have an upscaling type selected by default. For me, it is DLSS. For you guys, it might be to one of these other ones or it might even be set to none. Completely depends on what your PC is and how the game recognizes it and defaults when it turns on but what these upscaling types do is they are rendering out your game at a lower resolution so for example this is currently rendering out my game at 67 percent of my 1440p that's going to give me a nice fps boost but it's going to make the game blurry so then it automatically performs an upscaling method to make the game look as if it's 1440p but with better fps and in this game currently running these upscaling methods is basically necessary in order to actually achieve a good level of FPS that actually makes the game playable beyond 60 FPS. Now, I would recommend one of two options, and it's kind of personal preference because they both perform very, very similarly, um, but they have slightly different looks. The first of which is DLSS, and you should only have this available if you have an NVIDIA card. I would recommend that then you select the upscaling mode to DLSS quality, and then turn up your upscale sharpness to so somewhere around 0.6. The upscale sharpness on DLSS is very, very sharp, and this will give you an almost over-sharpened look, which I know a lot of people will like. However, I'd also recommend that you try out AMD FSR 2 at AMD FSR 2 quality, and this will be available no matter what GPU you have. It's available, it's open source, so NVIDIA cards like mine can still run it. For this, I'd recommend you turn the upscale sharpness all the way up to max. Now, these both have slightly different looks. I'd say AMD FSR looks more true to what the game would look like without an upscaling mode running, whereas DLSS sort of has a nice sharpness on top of it. So try both out, see what works best for you. I like AMD FSR too, so I'm gonna stick with that. Then we go down to NVIDIA low latency, reflex low latency. You've got the options of off, on, and on plus boost. Ideally, the way you're gonna figure this out is you look at your build and you say, is my GPU considerably stronger than my CPU? Do I have an older CPU and a sort of more up-to-date GPU? If that's the case where your GPU is strong, go for on plus boost. That will give you the best performance benefit. However, if your parts are kind of more in line with each other, you can sort of think about when they came out. So I've got a 3090 in my build and I've also got a 12700K, so a fairly recent Intel CPU. On will give you the best results. If you don't want to go through that whole process of figuring out, just try both out and see what works better for you. You can run some benchmarks in the game, turn the FPS counter on and see what works out best. Then V-Sync, definitely turn this off. V-Sync means that it will make the game operate at no higher than your monitor's refresh rate. We don't really want that to be the case. We're actually going to limit our FPS in the next step. So just leave V-Sync off. Speaking of which, frame rate. I've currently got it limited at 60 FPS and that's not how I'm actually going to be playing the game. I've just done it for this recording because right now, OBS recording this game, it's a bit stuttery, it's working a bit weirdly, so I just wanted to turn this down. For you guys, I would recommend that you set this setting in here to whatever your monitor's refresh rate is. So if you've got a 60 hertz monitor, run the game at 60 FPS. If you've got a 144 hertz monitor, 144 FPS, and so on. You might have one of these weird FPSs if you've got one of those overclocked kind of monitors, like 160 or 165. For me, I have a 240 hertz monitor, so I'm going to go for 240 FPS, but not in this video because I don't want this game to stutter whilst I'm recording. In fact, it might have just stuttered there while I did it, so we're not going to do that. Then... For these next four settings, these are all sort of post-processing effects. We've got motion blur, depth of field, chromatic aberration, and film grain. In an ideal world, I would just say turn all of these off. Even though this is a cinematic game, motion blur, I personally don't like. You might like it, but it does impact your GPU performance, so I'd recommend you turn it off. Depth of field, a similar thing in this game. I'm actually quite liking it because it does really add some nice cinematic effects to some of the big landscapes that you look over, so I'm actually currently keeping that on, but... 
personal preference. These next two ones though, Chromatic Aberration and Film Grain, I'd recommend you just turn these off. Chromatic Aberration is uh, emulating the color fringe of a camera lens and Film Grain is adding image grain like it's a film. Neither of these are ever good settings in games, even if you're going for a cinematic look. So I would recommend you just keep them off. And then this bottom saying, I've only got one GPU, so it's defaulted to my 3090. If you have multiple GPUs or you happen to have like a uh, an integrated uh, GPU into your CPU, uh, then just make sure the correct thing is listed here and you don't have a weird one selected. Next up, moving into graphics options. By default for me, this game was recommending me to run everything at ultra, which definitely didn't feel right because the game was running pretty badly. And I tweaked around and I find what worked best for me and what should work best for you in general. So starting off with effects quality, it says it sets the quality of particle effects to modify the complexity and fidelity of visual effects. Now, interestingly, when I turn this down from ultra to even just high in this room, you can see in this room in the background, we lose almost what looks to be like ambient occlusion, which is a slight a bit of kind of shadows, which is typically something which I would recommend you turn off anyway. When we start moving any lower than that, I don't really see any effects happening in the background. It's only really when we come down from ultra. So based on that, my assumption would be leave this running at high. It shouldn't affect performance much whatsoever, but this additional shadow rendering, what looks to be something like ambient occlusion, that is definitely gonna affect your FPS. So I'd run this at high. Then material quality, I kind of treat this similarly to textures where materials and textures and all that are things where in a single player game you really want these looking very very good so i would recommend that once again you run this at high then fog quality this is one where i'd recommend you turn this all the way down to low along with sky quality if you ever see the word volumetrics we've got quality of volumetric fog and we've got quality of the atmospheric sky and volumetric clouds that is a big big FPS killer, volumetric quality, volumetric fog, vol volumetric clouds, all of that stuff. It's a real big killer to FPS in every single game. And to be honest, whenever you turn these things down to low, you end up getting a overall clearer looking game. So I would never recommend that you turn these above low. So let's apply that. Then we've got foliage quality. In game, uh, I didn't see a huge amount of difference going from ultra to high. Uh, when I started going lower than that, you start getting bushes and trees looking a bit uh, badly put together, shall we just say. Uh, so I would recommend that you run this at high. There is a lot of foliage in this game and it's all part of the immersion of it being a single player game. So uh, keeping your foliage high when you're flying around in your broom and stuff. It's a nice thing to keep up. Then post-process quality, which sets the quality of all post-processing effects like ambient occlusion, depth of field, motion blur, and lens flares. Put this straight to low. Post-processing effects, all those things that are listed there are not things that we should really be caring about all that much. And it's just gonna potentially be either uh, an, an FPS hog or even just something that actually I think degrades the visual quality, adds visual noise that really doesn't help out the game whatsoever. Then shadow quality. I would never put your shadows on low unless you really, really need to because low shadows do look pretty damn bad. However, I would recommend you do turn these things down. So medium is my recommendation for shadows in this game. Then textures. Ideally, if you've got a decent amount of VRAM, you don't need a 3090 like me, but if you've just got a decent amount of VRAM, you should be able to leave this at ultra because texture quality, it says on the right here, it says it says impacts GPU performance and VRAM requirements. It doesn't impact GPU performance that much, really. It's more how much VRAM do you have? Do you have enough VRAM to run those textures? So if you're having problems after all this, you can try bringing this down to high or down to medium. But for me and for most of you guys running, decent GPUs, just keep it on ultra, okay? View distance quality. This is an interesting one. I would try out between medium and high on this. View distance is quite important in this game in certain scenarios when you're out in the open, you wanna get a good kind of view of the vistas around you. So I would probably keep this on high on my build, but view distance can impact your performance across the board, CPU, GPU, and VRAM. It might be one you do need to turn down later on if you're still experiencing problems, but start with it on medium or high and run with it from there and see how it feels for you. Then population quality. This is all about CPU performance. So this really should only be having effect if you're really, really CPU 
bottlenecked. So if you've got a really old CPU or even maybe like a slightly old CPU and you're having a lot of problems in game, that's when you can come in here and start turning this down. For me personally, I've got a good CPU, um, but I don't feel the need to keep this on ultra, so I would probably put it on high. But yeah, it's just completely down to CPU. It's nothing to do with GPU for population quality. Ray tracing, reflections, shadows, and ambient occlusion. Unfortunately, with the fact that this game doesn't run the best out the box to start with, you just can't run ray tracing on this game right now. You might not even have this available if you are not running an RTX card, obviously. Uh, but even if you do, ray tracing is still not quite there in terms of performance, even with the upscaling that I mentioned earlier. So keep it off. And if you want your colors in game to really pop in Hogwarts Legacy, because it's such a good looking game and you want everything to look as nice as possible, here's what you can do, a little tip. Go to NVIDIA control panel, uh, assuming you've got an NVIDIA card. They'll probably be saying similar for AMD, but I don't know what it is. Then go to adjust desktop color settings. And at the bottom, you'll have digital vibrance. I've got this turned up to 80% and it just makes the colors in game so much more vibrant and saturated. In a game like Hogwarts Legacy, which looks so beautiful, even though it doesn't run the best, this is just such a nice little setting that costs no FPS at all to run. And speaking of the NVIDIA control panel, you need to go watch this video next where I give you guys a full breakdown of all the recommended NVIDIA control panel settings for any game, including Hogwarts Legacy in 2023.